Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. Let me tell you about the greatest city in the world. New York, Mets win. Yankees win. Dodgers and guard dog. Let's talk ball. Cantillo. Vientos. Smooth. Hit one that bounced? Smooth. Hello and welcome to Talking Baseball. Presented to you by Seat Geek. Go see some of this postseason action. If you've got a chance, uh, whether you're out in L.A., Cleveland, New York, use code JOHNBOYPLAYOFFS10, you're going to save 10% off. And make some memories, you know? Say you saw the Viento Salami. Say you saw Stan hit a nuke. Um, my doppelganger, Brett Honeywell, in person. Um Download the Seeky Gap, John Boy Playoffs 10, 10% off your next order. Uh, whether you've used a code with them or not, so what are you doing? Uh, Trevor Plouffe, how you doing? Tough, tough day for everything west of New York City. We're still the fifth largest gross domestic mm. producer. I don't know what the GDP stands for, yeah. but if you took us away, you're still the fifth largest in the world. You're talking about California right now? Yeah, Yeah, California. Um, It's Cantillo, and if your attitude also matches your looks, are you a doppelganger or are you just Brett Honeywell's twin? Am I Brett Honeywell Jr.? That's your dad? That's a little... You might be older than him. That's like a simulation moment. I definitely am. I'm older than Salvador Perez. Mind-blowing. No, you're not. Yes, I am, Trev. Oh, my God. You act so much younger than him. Ah, uh, he's playing Little League with kids. I could do that. Um, Trev, big dude. Like, the championship series are actually here. Like, I know we know and we did the previews and all that, but it's like, wait. We're seeing the final four teams. Like, two of these teams are going to be playing in the World Series. Um, and obviously, a, a big... For length of series, or for hope of series, a massive win for the Mets today, uh, and the Yankees hold serve. But what uh, what do you what do you need before we dive in? I am probably if you're if you're listening to this show, you're going to hear me talk about some pitching choices today mm. from both losing teams. Sure. And I bet if you're a fan of those losing teams, you're like, yeah, talk about that. Trev's running a little hot. Uh, this might be from. From what was discussed pre-episode, it might be a hot take app, and that's not normally where we live, but it's no. it's that time of year. I tried telling people Mark Vientos was a dog. You did. You woof, woof, people. You listen up. Uh, he has a knack for the big moment. Oh, um, gross. Let's, uh, let's get into it. Let's do your Mets and Dodgers game two. Dodgers with a 1-0 series lead in a scoreless inning streak. Going on. Hey, it just seems like the Dodgers have a knack for this sort of thing with Landon being the bulk man with crooked neck Brazier opening it up. Would try to take down Big Sean. Boy, how big is your Mania as the Mets try to steal one in LA. That's a good scoreless streak for me to poop on. Lindor triumphs a homer. It's one. Nothing. Mets in the second. You need to call Tyrone. RBI double. Bases loaded for out of the park, Mark. And so he did. Oh, my God. Vientos grand slam. It's 6 nothing. Mets. It stay that way. Into the fifth. There's a snake in my boot. In the dugout rally snake. And that funky Muncie goes with a solo job of his own. One. Bottom six, Tommy's boy as Edmund hits a spade. 6-2 Dodgers. Bases loaded for Kike. Roll the two ball. Huge by Maton to get out of it. Kike's up again in the eighth, but the trumpets, here we go. Diaz gets him. Insurance run in the ninth. They'll head back to Queens with a 7-3 win as they tie the series one game to one.
where do I start? Do I hate on the Mets? Do I hate on the Dodgers? I'm not really sure. People tell me I hate both these teams, Jay. Right. And I really don't. Yeah. Really? You should have seen me dapping up all the Mets when I was in San Diego. I don't know, people. Um, oh, oh, oh. Trev. Interesting game. This was an interesting game to me, big time. Um, hey, I number one. I know we yeah, kind of joke about it. I think you have the easiest place to start ever on this game. Okay. Francisco Lindor, good baseball player. Eight pitch at bat, gets a cutter. Great at bat, ends the score of the singing streak. Yay! Right? 33 innings. Yeah! That goes away. So, I think that kind of leads into my point. Here okay. About, and I'm going to go with Dodgers first. Here, Dodgers fans, I'm going to hate on the Dodgers for a little bit, I guess. Or, I'm just talking about the baseball game. I think that's more of what I'm doing. Um, in those 33 innings, didn't see a lot of these dudes. The pitch today. That's kind of my main point. This was a bullpen game for the Dodgers. The reason they went with the bullpen game is because there's an off day tomorrow. You're about to play nice swing by Lindor. Uh, you're about to play three days in a row. So it's not good to have a bullpen day when you got to go three days in a row. This was the time to do it. It just looked a lot different than their last bullpen game. Right. That they went and beat the Padres with in, in an elimination game. You know, like this yes. wasn't the same guys coming out. We talk about the Dodgers and having this bullpen, and they went 33 scoreless innings, and they got high leverage arms. We didn't see any of them today. And that was kind of crazy to me. Uh, you know, Brazier gives up the the um, the homer to Lindor. He gets Alonzo to ground into a double play. Okay, one nothing, no big deal. Um, and then Landon Nat comes in, and he just – it just wasn't sharp. It, 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 everything out of his hand was either right down the middle hanger or a ball. And that's really not where you want, um, to be. So, I, I mean, I don't know where you go. I think that's my main point is I wasn't sure about Roberts and who he decided to pitch today. Shout out Brent Honeywell, your twin, your dad. I'm not really sure he did his job. Um, I just think there were some questionable, uh, spots here where we could have used our good bullpen and we didn't. Let's give the Mets some credit right. capitalizing on that. Um, top of the second, Marte first uh, first pitch uh, base hit. Winker works the count to three and two. He gets to walk. You're in, you're in business. I thought it was interesting they didn't bunt Iglesias in this situation. Look, we just scored our first run um, of the series. Let's try to push another one across. He doesn't. He flies out to second base. Um, and then Tyrone Taylor gets, this is what I was talking about, two strike, just a hanger over the plate. Um, then you get Alvarez to fly out. So that's another run. You get Alvarez to fly out to the shortstop. Obviously, you're going to walk Lindor in this situation. 100 times out of 100, Mark Vientos. May I, interge a may I interject for a second? Go for it. I don't do yeah. you do you think that Lindor hundred times out of a hundred changes now that Mark did this? No. Okay. No. Okay. Interesting. No, no. I think look, dude, I respect Vientos more than most of you out there. I really hmm. do. I mean that's just a hittable pitch. And Mark Vientos put a great swing and you have to tip your cap. Uh, it's a big situation. The guy's a young player, uh, but he's a stone cold killer. Uh, but Francisco Lindor is MVP level. You, you just open base, okay. you walk him every single, every single freaking time. Um, again, not really sure why Landon Knack was in uh, right there. I understand. Hey. That's kind of like typical, say you have an opener and then here's your bolt guy. But the Dodgers didn't approach the San Diego game like that. Was it because Lindor hit the homer in the first and they were down one nothing? Did it change everything right. there? I'm not really sure. Um, again, credit where credit is due. 6 nothing after the second. Now I can understand, for the most part, why you're going to your, you know, your, your B bullpen. But at that point, I just I didn't really understand it, Jake. Yeah, and I guess uh, I I wanted to hear everything you you had to say about this because you you genuinely before we went live you were like I don't 
what are the Dodgers doing? Um, and I, I guess I haven't fully dove in. And I, I guess there is a wrinkle with Brent Honeywell having the outing he had that it's like, okay, if if the Dodgers knew you could bank on Honeywell for three. But I, I guess the question is, you know, Landon Acton, it looks sharp. Um, and you're in the heart of that Mets lineup that, okay, I understand that you might have to save the bullpen for potentially a seven-game series. Uh, you also might not have if you win this game, which the Dodgers had a lot of chances that if this game wasn't 6-0, 6-2, six six yes. those chances would have felt a lot more Jake, significant. Let me read you who pitched against the, the Padres. Please. It went Brazier, it went Banda, right. uh, because he's a lefty. He came yeah. in there, and then it was Kopech, Vesia, Phillips, Hudson, Trinan, and then after they were already up 9 8 to nothing, Landon Nat comes in. Right. You're throwing your guys out there for that bullpen game. I guess because it's an elimination game, it's it's and this is game two of a seven, but dude, I mean, all these games are kind of like really important, right. dude. And you have the off day tomorrow. I didn't I I I didn't get it. And again, I guess it's it's hindsight. Um but I, I think you got some some dragons out there, and you kept them in the dragon pit. You weren't Khaleesi riding them around, spitting nice, fire. Dude. Yes. You know I had to put something like that. Yeah. Um, I guess, okay, because this is the part that I kind of ha- hadn't processed yet because we see Honeywell, we see Enriquez in this game, Knack. We didn't see my guy, Ben Kasparius. Um, but all of those guys are in that kind of – Hey, kid, we might need 60 out of you today. It's the postseason, and it is what it is. That Landon Knack in that same boat, if he comes in and he doesn't look sharp, this is a seven-game set that I think it's a great point by you. Why didn't it, I don't know, why didn't Daniel Hudson uh, come in to face Mark Vientos? And then yes. if he's already out, maybe you pitch him a next inning. So let's say Daniel Hudson gives you a 1.1 cleanish. Okay, Landon Knack didn't have it. And maybe there's a little too much he hindsight. Didn't look, he right. didn't like, look I, sharp. I, I very much respect your opinion on it more than mine. That, if you're the Dodgers and you're willing to go down with that, like, wouldn't you be willing to throw Daniel Hudson for one inning or whatever it would be, even if it was point one outs, if you're really worried about exposing your good bullpen in this series, that, hey, if Knack doesn't look sharp... Well, then what's the difference if Kasparius, Henriquez, or Honeywell doesn't look sharp? Like, that's that's kind of the same thing, but you've extended this game a little bit. That, uh, yeah, I, I guess in, in hindsight, I was kind of sitting there today like, yeah, I get it. Like, you know, Dodgers very much value, you know, Trinan, Kopech, Phillips, Hudson, even Banda, who does pitch in this game. But... Yeah, you also, you've given the Mets a ton of life. Like, if this goes back to Queens and it's 2 nothing Dodgers, and let's say they blew uh, whatever this lead was or could have been, which they almost did anyways, you know, I, I think I'm sitting in front of the mic like, oh boy, the Mets have to find it quick because otherwise it could be over quick. Where now it's, you know, I don't want to get too far ahead, but with it being 1-1 and the magic the Mets have had and Mania looks good again, like, the Mets' recipe is still recipeing. Like, it, it, it hasn't changed that, um, I don't know. I, I guess we'll find out later in the series that, especially with the three straight games coming up, if Dave Roberts saving that bullpen or... You know, we know a lot of the front offices are involved in these plans at this point that, um, hey, maybe that's going to pay off and we're going to be talking about the Dodgers' fresh arms, but maybe we aren't. Um, they they have an off day tomorrow. I know. and and They could have approached it. All I'm saying is they could have And you never know what's going to happen. Completely different. You could, you could win or lose game three by ten and not have to use the bullpen again. That's what you did in the first game. You won nine nothing. So, yeah, I guess... Um, You've you've persuaded me a little more than I thought that, um, yeah, it, this is a playoff game. You you had other long options, um, and I don't know, like Knack, 
And I don't, I don't think you need that. I think that's my point is you didn't need to go long options here. You could have did exactly what you did against the Padres and thrown guys for an inning a piece. Like you got enough to cover that. You really do. Maybe, you know, you ride someone for a couple innings if they look good and get out of an inning quickly. But I, I, I felt like they didn't approach this game with a sense of urgency, which is inter- interesting to me. The Mets did approach it with a sense of urgency. And obviously that helps you have Manaya on the mound. Right. He did look really good. You know, through five, he looked great. That sixth inning got a little shaky there. Two walks to Mookie and Teo. And then he gets the double play ball. Uh, Iglesias boots it. It's off the mound. Kind of a weird thing. I thought it looked really bright out there. Ooh. It's 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 the day. Nice. There, there is a, there's the sun. I don't know if okay. you know that. It's a star, okay. actually. Um, burning bright. It's like a fireball, which is... Think about that for a little bit. Um, he <laughs> boots it. So then they're... they're, they're in business, the Dodgers. Uh, bases loaded, nobody out. Maton comes in. Will Smith, I think he swung really early on. Uh, flies out to second base. And then you get Edmund with the knock under Pete's glove. Yeah. Which Pete doesn't look like he moves to his right very well. I've been a big fan of Pete's defense around the base. There's been a couple balls. There's a Shohei one, that one. Not moving great uh, to that side. Uh, so here we go. After the Muncie homer, it ends up being 6-3. And then Kike's got a chance, man. He's got a chance. And it looked like he was going to get it done. Vientos bobbles it. It was yeah. like a, it was about to be an inning from hell uh, for the Mets. And instead, turns the double play out of the inning, 6-3. And here it is. It's a really nice turn oh, by. Oh, oh, God. Really yeah. nice turn Iglesias by Iglesias. Has. Takes the hit there, man. Alonzo with a really good stretch. Like, I think sometimes we don't appreciate the value of what a good first baseman does because, you you know, if, if you see another first baseman, they get pulled off the bag on that throw. You say, well, throw wasn't online. Pete. I've been saying to people around the base, he's been great. He's got, he's off like the, the, base. the number one scoops guy, Pete Alonzo. Um, yeah. Wow, I hadn't seen the bobble from that angle. <laughs> Holy smokes, yes, Mark. It was, it was very, oh, very close. He almost um, just signed his first base paperwork for next yeah. year if he, <laughs> if, he <laughs> if he doesn't get that one. Yay. I don't mind his defense at third base. I, I feel like I've seen him make some it's good plays. It's all there. And, and, like, it's all yeah, there. It's it just there. needs a little, a little more. Okay, so 6-3, right? My it's height. kind of a game. My height. First, yeah. you know... Um, Stanek does a great job. He comes in in the bottom of the seventh. You know, K's Mookie on three pitches gets Teo to go five three right there, and, and then this is where I'm 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 pretty interested, um, because the Dodgers bring in Engardo Enriquez, who's a young kid for them. He's only pitched three and a third innings. Okay, uh, he pitches uh, the top of the eighth, does a really good job, gives up one walk, but. Gets Taylor, Lindor, and Vientos, right? Still 6-3. Dodgers kind of have a shot there uh, in the eighth. By the way, to your point, Acuna comes in. Iglesias goes to third. Vientos gone. Um, Acuna goes to second base. Top nine. Again, this is a questionable decision by Dave Roberts here. It's 6-3. You have... You have the top of your lineup is going to hit in the bottom of the ninth. You have Andy Pajes, number nine hitter. Then you have Shohei, Mookie, Freddie, Teoscar, all like they have a chance there in the bottom of the ninth. Instead, you leave Engardo in instead of bringing in one of your dragons. Oh, okay. 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 K's Nemo walks Pete, allows Pete to steal. That's where I thought you were going, dude. I was I was furious. Like I okay. I think I think that's some dumb analytic bullshit that we are just missing as a baseball society right now. How can you possibly give up a free base? I don't care who's on first base. You cannot allow that. To go from 3 to 4, that's insane. Ex- that's my point here is he's still in. He's 22, three and one-third innings pitched in the regular season. This is a big, crucial time. Not knocking on this, dude, but like you have guys that should have been in there instead of him in this situation. Pete Steele's second base, starting Marte drives him in. I wrote in my notes, dagger. 
four runs now. Okay. What happens in the ninth, Jake? Andy Pius gets on, Shohei gets on. All of a sudden, Mookie's in there against Edwin Diaz, and it would have been the tying run. Now, in Edwin's mind, one bad pitch ties the game. Instead, you have a four run lead. He doesn't give a shit. Like, he can still pitch how he wants to pitch because a home run doesn't even mean anything. So then he ends up striking Mookie out, Freddie out, Teoscar out in a row. And I think, look, did it have an impact on the game? I think so. You could say, well, he just mowed the next three guys down. But the thought of a, a one bad pitch as a tie game didn't have to enter his mind because, because Dave Roberts didn't put in one of their guys in the top of the ninth. So I was, my whole point, I think the whole gist of this is, hey, tip your cap to the Mets for coming out and doing the thing. Tip your cap to the door for, for setting the tone. Vientos for putting their team up huge early with a great swing, saying, I felt disrespected. Okay. Um, but the Dodgers pitching decisions to me were very strange. Yeah. I um, That stolen base in the ninth, like that's – that's a level of unacceptable, like that just can't happen. I, I get that we're playing postseason baseball and we're seeing some of some of the dogs busting out new tricks. We saw Big Giancarlo Stanton uh, snag a bag because it was the last thing anyone was thinking about. But that's that doesn't excuse anything. It it means you should be thinking about it just a little bit. Like that's crazy, and I wonder if that just ties into kind of the whole sense of urgency uh, that you're talking about. Because yeah, I mean. In a way, the Mets and Edwin Diaz are born for each other. Like, Mets fans just expect him to come in and basically let the first two guys on. Um, but then he he finds his way out for the most part. Um, and, yeah. Pete's stolen base totals, Jake. Sure. 2019, his rookie year, 161 games, one. Mm-hmm. 2020, 57 games, one, three, five, four, three. Like, we know he's not a burner, but he's not even one of those guys right? that just steals bags like Paul Goldschmidt. Like, like we used to see some of those pool hole seasons, and we'd be like, wait, Big Albert's snagging yeah, 15? Exactly, exactly. Um, yeah, that's... Yeah. Okay. You know, I, I just think all these things matter, man. I know it's a seven-game set, and, you know, one game isn't as much... Uh, as it is in a five game or a three game. I understand that. But I just felt like the decisions today, there wasn't a ton of urgency. Hey, man, you know. and maybe maybe I the answer could just be you're right. I, I want to talk more about that and kind of the upcoming three games, essentially, and game three. And it's brought to you by Mountain Dew. Uh, we need to get off our ass more, just as a society. What are we doing? Do it, Trev. Show them. Uh, bold flavors and refresh. Oh, feet for free? No way. Bold flavors and refreshing citrus kick. Mountain Dew will get you off your ass and have you feeling like you're on an actual mountain. I can't wait for the first person that sends me the picture of them on a mountain drinking a Mountain Dew because that's a mountain on a mountain. Um, you know, whatever you're into, you're tossing the frisbee around. Uh, video games, kickball, frisbee golf, maybe blitzball in a warehouse. The mountain is calling. You should answer. Grab your friends. Grab an ice cold Mountain Dew wherever refreshing beverages are sold. And do the do. There's a link in the description. Uh, Trev, the upcoming three at City, uh, game three and three games. It's Walker Bueller. Like let's let's be honest. We we gave him credit for his grit and determination, but. He gave up a six spot last time we saw him. Uh, Yoshinobu Yamamoto, who had an amazing outing, he's built up to 50, 60 pitches, uh, basically rehabbing through the playoffs. Um, and, hey, we saw our guy Jack that he would be the anchor in game five there. But may- maybe that's why we don't have the keys to a franchise yet, and maybe we'll be snapping for Dave Roberts in a couple days because they are going to need their bullpen, man. Uh, and if... If Walker Bueller kind of looks like the Walker Bueller we've seen recently, they're going to have to manage that game very aggressively. And they're going to, the Yamamoto game, like his base, best case scenario, we, de- we just saw his last time out. So maybe he deserves more credit. But God, they are, they're going to lean on this bullpen big time. I, I, I know what you're saying, but I dis- uh, the reason I disagree with it is 
um like you 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 could have went after today you have right an off day so i just don't i i don't get it these guys are going to have to pitch i mean every single team that we see that goes on a run over the last you know i don't know we've been how long have we been doing this 4 or 5 years now like their bullpen comes in all the time during the postseason. You pare it down to three or four guys that you just right. re- rely on. So who cares if you expose them for a game? Like these are your dogs, dude. P- guess what? Pitchers are going to win more often than not. And I get it. Like every time a hitter sees someone, it's more information and all that. But I, I just, I don't agree with that. I, I get. You it. knew you were going to need your bullpen today. Right. You don't know if you're going to need them with Bueller, Yamamoto, and Jack. Those are traditional starters that are built up to go. Let's just give them five innings, you know, or four, whatever it is. This was a bullpen game, and you just, I don't know. I want to stop talking about it because I feel like I've talked enough about it. Yeah, no, it, it is. I think it's very fair to say why not go to Hudson or even Phillips for the heart of that Mets lineup with, you know, the game in the balance. Um, I didn't and, even think about just for the Vientos at bat. To right. be honest with you, I was thinking, why is Nack in there to start that inning? But you're totally right. Like, you get some trouble on, somebody should be up. You intentionally walk Lindor and then bring in a dog. Like, put the fire out. Yeah. Yeah. Cause you still, like I said, Honeywell. We, we saw, we saw, um, we saw Carlos Mendoza do it in game one. Right. When he tried to keep, he's like, hey, I tried to give my offense a chance, is what he said. He brought Reed Garrett in there in the second inning. Yeah. Yes. I'm trying to give my offense a chance. I like that more than what happened today with the Dodgers. Yeah, I do. I think as more analytics and thoughts get into baseball, which, again, if you're, you know, you know, construction worker Jake here, not just yelling at analytics, but I, I think we're still seeing teams try to outsmart anything. Um, and like, I, I think, I think teams are scared of the seven game series. I think teams are scared of exposing their bullpen over the seven games that I think teams are thinking of different ways to navigate it. And I think there's different ways to do it. I think, I think we've seen guys throw different pitch mixes to try to get them off their scent for a long series. I, I think we see, I, I think we saw a case here of like, nope, we're, well, we're down. We, we can't risk it today, which it's a seven game set. Do you remember when Madison Bumgarner just threw every inning of the World Series? Yeah. Kind of. Those were weird years for me. Those were, what was it, 2014? Yeah, I was. <laughs> I, had my, I had a great season that year. As high as a kite. That. Um, I actually wasn't a weed guy then. Um, it sets up for a fun game three. Walker Bueller versus Luis Severino both have had playoff highs and lows. Uh, that is lining up to be a fun one uh, at City. I feel like half our office is going. Um, it's uh, it's an exciting game for Mets fans. And like I said, I just think that that feeling of going into the two zero game at home, I felt it. Uh, Astros Yankees twenty twenty two. Uh, slightly different circumstances. Yankees team was like giving out on them and it was the Astros that there was like, there was hope. It was like, Hey, you know, let's, let's push a couple across and get the porch and then we'll get loud. Uh, they stomped on our throats and it was just a sad time that the Mets, they could have been set up for that. Now they're not, uh, they're, they are set up. Well, three at city, um, yeah, they stole home field advantage. Yeah. Uh, and Great. Again, I want to make sure Mets fans understand I'm giving your team a bunch of credit yes. for responding yes. the way that you did. After uh, getting the brakes beat off you in game one, you came back with a cool level head in a big situation where Mark Vientos could have said, I'm going to drive all four of these runs in, although he'd end up doing that. He talked after the game. He said, I was just trying to have a good at bat, trying to get one in, which is the exact – mentality you need to have hats off to the Mets hey I I yes the all the Dodger stuff where we've mentioned that's none of the Mets business go out and do your thing 
And dude, the Dodgers fans, the the glass half full is like you guys were still there. Kike had a couple big at bats that that could have changed the tone that final inning. Um, and again, it all could have felt a little differently. That uh, I I think I slightly disagree, Trev. I throwing up the fours to Lindor. Vientos has shown me enough, man. Like I, you know, not a big difference in a three run homer and a four run homer. Like what? It's analytics. Um, I don't know, dude. I I understand why they did it today. Vientos, he's he's showing. Dude, he's, you have an open base. You set up a force anywhere. You have a right on right matchup. There is no there is no circumstance where I don't walk the door there. Not one. I'm interested to see as the series goes because you do that again. You load the bases or put first and second on and Vientos clips you again? That's a fool me once. Shame on me. Mm. Shame on you. Um, anything about else about this uh, before we kick over to the American Liga? Uh, I don't think so. I really did write dagger on there if you can see that down there somewhere. Right there. Top nine dagger. Nice. I like your notes, Color -coded. man. Um, we might have to we might have to upload those to our sub stack if you you feel comfortable about it. Trying to give the what people it's our website, Trev. Welcome to 2018. Um, a website's called a sub stack. Oh boy, not a website. <sighs> let's do some. <laughs> I'm being serious. I know. Whatever. I know. Um, let's do. Let's do some American League Baseball because uh, Chris Rose's guards and BBD's Yanks teed it up in the boogie down tonight, Trev. The Cleveland Guard Dogs rolled into town looking to mix up a little Cobb salad on the mound with veteran Alex in that strong bullpen as the Yankees and Carlos rode on their chase for 28 SOTO Soto. Childish Bambino opens up the scoring with the solo home run, 1-0. In the third, Joey Cantillo. Joey can't strike -o. Two runs on wild pitches. It's 3-0 Yanks. <laughs> the Judge with a court-ordered sack fly. It's 4-0 Yankees. Hey, Pinocchio Rocchio, he's a real boy. Solo homer for the kid. That was Rodon's only blemish. Six innings pitch, three hits, nine Ks. One earned run. Hit the music and hit the lights. Giancarlo, let the rhythm take you over, Giancarlo. Tequiero, moonshot homers. It's 5-1. Tim Hill was not chill, neither was the Yanks D. As rich homie Quan sends another more Cleveland's way. But that be it. Rodon to Holmes to Hill to Dream Weaver. Yanks take game one, 5-2 final. Pinocchio is such a freaky, freaky story. Man, you start getting Jimmy going on Geppetto, and it gets ugly quick. Um, Geppetto, what's the thing? Is it called Pleasure Island? Make sure you guys download the DraftKings Sportsbook. Playoff baseball is here. It's the final stretch. Same game parlays, live betting, and odds boosts, and so much more. DK has you covered, and right now, if you bet $5, you'll instantly get $200 in bonus bets when you use code TALKIN. So download the DraftKings Sportsbook app now. New customers use promo code TALKIN. Bet just $5 on any wager and get $200 in bonus bets instantly. That's promo code TALKIN only at the DraftKings Sportsbook. Uh, where to, boss, man? Uh, you know I was obviously locked into this game. My my Yanks, Rosie's guards. We live stream it on Talking Yanks. Um I obviously enjoyed how things went down. You were on Pleasure Island. <laughs> a little bit, man. What is your idea of Pleasure Island? I mean, just... just... Um, is it beach? Is it an actual island? Yeah. Is it... It's an actual island. I love islands. Uh, you know, there's a lot of sports and activities. Um, okay. I beach think there's volleyball. a lot of beautiful people. There's a lot of beautiful animals. Scantily clad. Sure. Well, why even be clad? You know what I'm saying? Um, <laughs> okay, I'll get it started on the game. Uh, it starts with maybe new segment uh, for us in the playoffs. 
It starts with Carlos Rodon, man. Yes, uh, it does. Carlos yes, Rodon, does. his first playoff game was a little bit of a dud. He came out hot to trot, uh, literally, and it was like unsustainable. Looked like he learned his lesson. He kept himself composed. Uh, and this is the guy that when we did White Sox, Giants, Carlos Rodon, and it was like, wait, how many strikeouts did he have? What's his ERA? It's the guy we saw tonight, man. And it was kind of old school starting pitcher like, hey, you got two strikes on you. Guess what's coming? Uh, you're going to get a slider in the dirt, and I don't know if you're going to lay off of it. And they really didn't tonight. Um, he was He was dominant. Yeah, I mean, look, the the bottom line is Carlos Rodon went out there and got me all aged up. Oh. He went, nine Ks, no walks. Mm. That's what gets me, man. I really think that was kind of the difference in the game, if we're really being honest about it. I mean, uh, free passes, free 90 feet, that changes, especially if you're the Guardians and you understand we're not going to, keep up with this offense like we're not like that's the bottom line we have to limit free passes we have to limit the extra uh, 90 feet um and we gotta like play our brand of baseball they didn't do that tonight jake mm. nine k's total for the guardians they walk seven people dude yeah we're talking about five wild pitches which we can kind of get into that later if you want uh but yes Car carlos rodon was you know, masterful. And I think he did control the emotions better. And I think, yeah, you do learn from that. Uh, his first playoff start uh, this year. And, um, you know, it was him and it was, you know, Juan Soto setting the tone. I think his first two at bats, both 110 miles an hour off the bat, one single, one homer. Like this was, I, I don't like they didn't pitch that bad besides the free passes i think they like mm. I, I don't know right no. like it's about as good as you could have hoped for what do the yankees go with runners in scoring position oh for seven if you didn't issue those free passes and wild pitches and all that like it's it's a different ball game but you did right. and you can't do that if you're the guardians against this team yeah there's there's a little bit of chicken in the egg there uh first juan soto nine for 13 now career against alex cobb yeah two dot in yeah. it i believe yeah. yeah, I think he's seeing it. Um, and, yes, the walks are a little bit... I mean, dude, I can't even say, like, hey, great Yankees at bats. Like, they were non-competitive no. walks that, you know, the other side of that would be like, hey, you know, if if they were competitive, maybe, maybe the Yankees throw a double down the line and that changes things. But, yeah, it's been... Dude, there's kind of a weird feeling that, like, this Yankees game, in a way, has been every Yankees game of the postseason, really, except the Rodon loss. Like, they got incredible pitching. Luke Weaver, uh, welcome to the national stage. Um, Clay Holmes continues to, you know, I don't know. He's not a big keep receipt guy, I don't think, but holy smokes, what he's doing this postseason is impressive. That it's really good pitching, and then <laughs> I guess you could say patience by the Yanks. And, dude, I... I'm obviously excited. The team I like, the Yankees, just won the first game of the ALCS. The guys that homered are Giancarlo Stanton, who I think is going to be a Hall of Famer. He's got $300 million in probably a pretty fun basement. Uh, the yeah, other, I feel like I've kind of like been to his basement. But... Yeah. Yeah. Nice workouts. It's probably like a workout and party setup. I have it. Um He's a sports guy. You got the nice TV. You got a fucking couch. Um, the other guy that homered, Juan Soto. Ricky Nolasco in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> That's a technical foul. Like, not creepy. Not creepy. No, he's there, though. <laughs> yeah. You can still get a couple outs this postseason, Dodgers. Does um, Juan Soto do that on every homer? Um, That's a good question. I think so. I think that's kind of his bullpen thing. <laughs> that was a big one. I like that. Whatever. That do what you got to do. If you're 9 for 13 against someone, do what you got to do. You do that cartwheels if you that want. That was an unintentional thing out of me. Uh, that's that's going to have me asking questions the next 48 hours. Uh, Juan Soto's about to have 600 mil coming his way that, like, dude, Aaron Judge hasn't really fully joined this postseason no. yet. Fully joined the postseason. He hasn't joined it whatsoever. I mean, great, you know, uh, sack fly. 
uh tonight but so no, he's not joining. That, i guess that's kind of like scary i think it's scary for teams i still have it in a good bucket because the yankees are winning games um they've yeah. won four out of their five playoff so games and aaron so true winning solves everything dude aaron aaron judge hasn't clicked yet i can put that in a really good bucket for now uh chisholm and austin wells have been lost at the plate um and anthony rizzo joins the party this series uh he had been out with uh broken fingers in his hands that we didn't know what version of Rizzo we were going to get. And uh, here's what I'll tell you. He gets a hit in his first at bat. That's a tone setter a little bit like, okay, you that's Anthony Rizzo. He's going to have a statue in Chicago one day. Um, Like dude, the other thing. And I maybe, you know, I'm a silly guy. Uh, My name's Jake. It's one letter away from being joke. Go watch the Anthony Rizzo, Joey Cantillo at bat. It's a form of baseball comedy. The young lefty comes out of the pen in the biggest game of his life. Anthony Rizzo just stands on the plate. He dares him to throw a strike. Hey, dude, you throw a strike. uh, A, if you miss inside, I will wear it, and that'll be a run. And if you don't throw a strike, we'll just get a run. He ends up spiking it. Bo Naylor was having a rough time. It It was a little bit of bully ball from the old vet. Um, that yeah, the box score ends up looking like not super pretty for the Yankees. And that's been a little bit the story of their postseason, except the pitching. The pitching has been magnifique. French. It has been. You know, you're right about Clay Holmes. He's just come in and done his job every single time. He's been called upon in different roles, different innings. And I think it is it is receipt time for him. I'm very, very happy because, you know, I, I you can tell that he's a good teammate by the way guys had his back throughout the year when he was struggling as a closer and people were calling for his head and people were in the media saying, that's our guy, that's our guy. You don't do that for everyone. That's not a thing you do for everyone. That's a thing you do for a good teammate, a guy that's working hard. That's the bottom line. So um, happy he's having his, his success. Uh, Tim Hill, I think, ends up giving the first earned run up by the yeah. bullpen. He's he's always an interesting watch for me, for sure. Sure, it's, can't tell if he's handsome or not. Can't balls in play. Uh, we've done this before. He's like yeah, he's trashy bar smoke show. And then Luke Weaver, bro, what the freak? Out of some big jams. I mean, with all that said, Cleveland still gets Jose Ramirez up there as the tying run, dude. And Luke Weaver just kind of toys with them a little bit. And he looked nasty. Will Brennan comes up. I think it was a three pitch strikeout, fastball, two change ups, bat at bat. You got to get one in right there, and they don't. Um, uh, that was it's been it's been impressive, man. It really has. I could even go into this and say Stephen Vote, like kind of what is you doing, baby? Like Ooh. why is Cantillo coming in right there? It's one nothing. Like you, you got a bullpen pop. This is another team that's hunting f- for innings. So, like, I, you know, Put we don't have to fire re- yeah. out early. Give your offense a chance. I that's the way I'd manage, man. Like, you can't okay. just say, "Well, we got to save them. Save them for a win, bro." This is the freaking ALCS, right? What are we saving these guys for? I I just think he. We've seen it too many times in the past. I mean, I, I always go back to when Andrew Miller became that guy for Terry Francona. That was like the first time we really saw, I think, and correct me if I'm wrong, baseball historians. Yes. (laughs) Or please don't, gosh. (laughs) Um, That was like the first time we saw a guy willing to pitch anytime. Right. And be like, you know, the guy that puts the fire out. I I I need a guy like that. I would manage like that, especially when we're talking ALCS. Like... Bring a guy in, put the fire out. I don't think Joey's your guy. I don't. It's not right. a great situation for him to be in. Now he's got a little bit more uh, innings than Enriquez in the Dodgers, but it's only 33 on the year. So I just I think you had other options. Put the fire out and then try to get length in a clean inning. I don't think that was the right time. Yeah, and Trev, it's, it's where – I. I, I think it came off too rare analytic y before, but like Joey Cantillo is 24 and doesn't have a lot of bullpen experience. Like he has been mostly a starting pitcher that 
bringing him into the middle of an inning, like, A, that should be part of the conversation. And and they use, uh, what's his name, Sabrowski in this game, and he looked pretty decent except for the ball that Stanton obliterated. But uh, the point being, if you're willing to use a guy like that, why wouldn't you use him to get out of a situation? And when you're hunting the innings for a Cantillo, or Pedro Avila actually came in and was really good for them uh, in this outing, like extend your chance. Like I, I get the juggle of using those high end bullpen guys and you know, the exposing stuff, like there's other ways to navigate that. Like, I don't know if Cade Smith faces hitters one through four in one game and then Cade Smith faces batters five through nine, one game, like you didn't, you didn't overexpose them there. Um, again, I, the Yankees, the Guardians are another team hunting innings. Uh, the two New York teams kind of aren't. Like, they both have four, or if not five, starting pitchers on their teams right now that they don't have to worry about those decisions where maybe it's kind of what we saw in the Dodgers game and the Guardians game that they were definitely, they were absolutely more concerned about using their leverage bullpen pieces. I don't know, man. It's just two for me, two managers who you, you keep saying hunting innings. I don't know, man. Right. These are the innings. I, I, they're the innings. I don't know what we're saving our guys for. I mean, this is this is what you, this is it. Yeah. <laughs> There's four teams left, guys. It's <laughs> kind of like now or never. Yeah. Um and Carlos Stanton, man, I again, I know I live, we live in the Yankees' weeds that we've seen all of it, but this is a guy that's been talked about as a salary dump for years. Um, and he put together a nice season this year, and he is doing it again in the postseason as he's done in previous postseasons. And that's, to be obnoxious, that's what used to matter in this big city. Um, and the fact he's doing it again is insane. Uh, he just missed two other balls that they were uh, centimeters away from being a two two run homer game. And uh, Trev, I'll be honest with you, you talk about the bullpens getting shorter and stuff like that. Uh, the Yankees back end of their bullpen right now, and we've seen it in the past couple years. Like you need a couple guys to click. They've got a couple guys clicking. We've got people talking about Luke Weaver as the best reliever in baseball right now. Dan Plesac, add. Um, Clay Holmes, yeah, he said that tonight. Uh, okay. Clay Holmes is, you know, he is on a uh, playoff consecutive inning scoreless streak that's setting a record in Yankees history. Uh, Canely is good. We haven't seen him in a couple of days. Dude, even guys like Jake Cousins was electric for them, and they haven't really rolled him out. Ian Hamilton has had moments of high-end relief, and they haven't had to push that button that the Yankees are sitting – very pretty, man. Home field advantage. Aaron Judge hasn't clicked yet, which, hey, if they lose next game and Judgey puts up an 0 for 4, that's not in the positive bucket anymore. That goes back in the I'm negative. not going to say what I said before the show. I'm not. His at-bats looked better tonight. He he lined out to right. Sack yep. fly 3-0, which is a little weird, but whatever. Swing pops. It's a swing. walk that he battled back in. He got... I know. Well, actually, you're the guy that does want to hear this. He got screwed in his first at bat, one one pitch. Uh, just, Saw that. Just it changes the whole at bat, two one to one two. Like that's in a year or two, Judgey throws this up and it the call gets reversed, which I'm excited for. Um, and I guess you know where where I'll kind of land land this for me is Yankee fans are feeling fantastic. Um, they had. They played really well against the AL Central this year. They have good history against this Guardians team. Garrett Cole takes the bump tomorrow. Rodon was previously one of their biggest questions, and it feels like that's been answered in a big way that Yankee fans are feeling pretty good. And on the Cleveland side, I guess, hey, it's a big start for Tanner Bybee, who like is yep. their starting pitcher right now. They have that whole bullpen fresh. Uh, that with an off day following, they should absolutely be balls to the walls tomorrow. And all these stars we're talking about, are you performing, are you not? You know, a talking baseball favorite, J-Ram right now, he yeah. has had a tough, tough postseason, and they need him to be like the guy. 
I think he's he's underrated, isn't he? <laughs> I mean, Aaron Boone takes his arms off. How can you throw your arms at the TV if you take your arms off, Aaron? Oh, <laughs> heavy. Answer that one. Um, anything else you want to tee up about the next game uh, or anything else from this game? Yeah, I mean, again, I'm kind of questioning the bullpen moves because Tyner. Tanner Bybee is your starter, a right. guy that's pitched really well. So, like, you can almost say, well, hey, like, maybe we don't need our, we aren't going to need our bullpen as much. I don't know, man. Maybe I'm just going hindsight too much to, on this episode, but I, I think that the Guardians just, they can't, they can't give away free bases, man. Yeah. That is like the one thing they cannot do. They don't have the offense to be able to overcome that. So, uh, you know, Bobby has to have a good start. Their bu- good bullpen does need to be deployed. Um, they do need to get the timely hits. Like, J Ram's got to come up and do it. So, or whoever is pinch hitting, like, that's kind of been their recipe the entire freaking year, man. Yeah. Whether it's Lane Thomas, David Fry, Brian Rocchio, Andre Semenez, some of these guys that, you know, don't get mentioned in, in the baseball zeitgeist too often. Like, they've been coming up clutch. Somebody's been coming up clutch every single. You know, pretty much every single game this year for them, um, they that needs to happen. I just you can't walk seven guys. Yeah, uh, Garrett Cole is scary, and he's has a great track record in Cleveland. So okay, yeah, and that, hey, at Cleveland, it was a it was a tough game one for the New York Mets, and they have taken the momentum in that series. If if they take down Cole, if if J Ram gets the big hit, or you know one of those. One of those Guardians guys that runs into one. Brandon we haven't Manzardo. talked about Josh Naylor for one second. 167 in the postseason, 375 OPS. This is the guy that rocked Garrett Cole to sleep. You know I say this in the most endearing way. Josh's. If Garrett Cole Josh's. rocks him to sleep tomorrow, oh my gosh. If Garrett Cole strikes him out and hits him with the baby, oh, what, will you, what will you do? What you do? Like I don't have any dislike towards Josh Naylor or you know anything, but I I would be the South Park meme on my computer. <laughs> it's like the only meme I know. Why is that? Why is that? Huh? I don't really know. That's interesting. That's Pleasure Island, huh? Um, Jim Carlos basement. Uh, we covered a lot per usual, um, and we're in the team. Ricky Nolasco was a Yankee, wasn't he? Or is that? Am I talking? Um, I don't am I talking think so. Now? No, Carl Pavano was Carl Yankee. Pavano, a famous Yankee. Who also he for might sure be was Connecticut in guy. The ah. In your basement. Mm. Thank you, everyone. We will be live streaming tomorrow's Yankees game on Talking Yanks. Uh, if you haven't joined one of those yet, they're a good time. Come do that. Um, and we will see you back here. The CS, dude. Chicks up. Mike. It was me, Carl Pavano, Justin Morneau, in California. My friend brings a bag of what? We order too much room service. I don't know what happened. I don't either. (laughs) Quite frankly, not sure.